Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. This 10 days ago into your GCSE Maps exam, that first paper, just keep up the hard work, you're doing really, really well. Um, and today we're going to be focusing on the topic of conversion graphs. So we're going to look at how to draw conversion graphs and how to use conversion graphs in a variety of questions. So in this video, I'm going to go through how to do it, and then also I'll show you where the practice questions is as well at the end of the video. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at conversion graphs. Now in this video, I'm going to go through conversion graphs. Now there will be some questions for you to think about. It may be easier for you actually to print the practice questions today and after the video to do those practice questions. But what I'm going to do is at various times, I get you to pause and think about how you would do these questions. So here we've got a conversion graph and we've got miles along the bottom and kilometers going up vertically. And we've been asked to use the conversion graph to convert five miles into kilometers. And then also to use the conversion graph to convert four kilometers into miles. So press pause now and think about how you would do that. Okay, so I've just made the graph a little bit bigger and the first one was to change five miles into kilometers. So if I wanted to change five miles into kilometers, what I would do is I'd get my ruler and pencil and I would go to five miles, which is here. I'd get my ruler and pencil and I'd draw up to the line, a bit like whenever we looked at scatter graphs, and then I would go across and that's eight kilometers. So five miles is approximately equal to eight kilometers. So let's write that down, eight kilometers, eight kilometers. Okay, next, our next one says change four kilometers into miles. So think about how you would change four kilometers into miles. Okay, so if I want to change four kilometers into miles, I'd go to kilometers. Now, the two of kilometers is on the vertical axis and four kilometers is here. I'd go across to the line, which is there, and I'd go down. And that's exactly in the middle between two and three. So that'll be 2.5 miles. So 2.5 miles. So it's approximately equal to 2.5 miles. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. So this time we've got a conversion graph for kilograms and pounds and we've been asked to change five kilograms into pounds and to change 17 pounds into kilograms. So press pause now and think how you would do that. Okay, so in terms of the first one, we want to change five kilograms into pounds. So let's go to five kilograms, which is here. And we're going to go up to the line and then across and that's equal to 11 pounds. So five kilograms is approximately equal to 11 pounds. Okay, next part says to change 17 pounds into kilograms. So again, we're going to get a ruler and pencil and we're going to go to 17 pounds, which is here. And we're going to go across and we're going to go down. And as you can see, we've got seven and then eight in the middle, 7.5. So it's about 7.6, 7.7. So I think it's about 7.7. .7, so 7.7 .7 kilograms. So that means that 17 pounds is approximately equal to 7.7 .7 kilograms. And that's it. So sometimes whenever you're using these conversion graphs, you can read them off quite nicely. That 11 pounds was five kilograms. That was quite straightforward. In terms of this one, we've had to use a bit of judgment in terms of what it is. And whenever you're doing that on conversion graphs, as long as you've done it right, and you've gone from the right number across and down and so on, then that's fine. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says to change 40 kilograms into pounds. So we've got the same conversion graph and we need to change 40 kilograms into pounds. So I want you to press pause now and think how you change 40 kilograms into pounds. Okay, now one problem with this one is we can't go to 40 kilograms. It only actually goes up to about 11 kilograms, actually not even. Um, so here we've got 10 kilograms. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find out how many pounds is in 10 kilograms to begin with. So I'm going to get my ruler and pencil. I'm going to go to 10 kilograms, which is here. And I'm going to go up to the line, which is there, and then across. And that's 22 pounds. So that means that 10 kilograms is equal to 22 pounds, according to our graph, 22 pounds. Now we wanted to find 40 kilograms. So it's going to be four lots of 10 kilograms. So we just need to multiply this by four. Four, or we could add four of them together. If we had four lots of 10 kilograms, we could do 22 plus 22 plus 22 plus 22 and get that's equal to 88 pounds and do it that way. Or you could just multiply by four. So you can multiply by four to get 40 kilograms. So multiply by four. And if you multiply this by four, that'd be equal to 88 pounds. And that's it. So 40 kilograms is 88 pounds. So the answer would be 88 pounds. And that's it, 88 pounds. And that's it. So sometimes you're not able to use your conversion graph for the number you want to convert. So what you'd need to do is choose another number which could be useful to help you in that conversion. Okay, let's look at another question. Okay, so this time we've got a conversion graph. We've got currency. We've got pounds and Emirati dirhams. So that's the currency used in the UAE, the United Arab Emirates. And we've got a camera cost 850 Emirati dirhams. How much is that in pounds? So 850 Emirati dirhams. You need to convert that into pounds. So press pause now and think about how you would do that. Okay, so there's quite a few approaches you could use in this question. If you want to change 850 Emirati dirhams into pounds, well, unfortunately, it's not 850 on this graph, so we're going to have to choose a smaller number, and that's going to help us. Um, I'm thinking I might go for 200 to begin with. So if we look at 200 dirhams, so 200 dirhams is 
whenever this graph was made was 40 pounds. Now, obviously, I may change the change on a daily basis. So, for 200 Emirati dirhams at this time was 40 pounds. So, that means if we know that 200 dirhams is equal to 40 pounds, we can find 800 Emirati dirhams because we could just times this by four. So, if we times by four and times by four, we get the 800 dirhams will be equal to 40 times 4 will be 160. So that means the 800 dirhams is 160 pound. Now we've got 850, so we need to find what 50 dirhams is. So if we go from 50 dirhams across and down, that's 10 pound. So that means the 850 dirhams will be equal to, well, we had 160 pound for 800. We've got another 10 pound here, so it's going to be 170. So it's going to be 170 pound. And if you got that, well done. Now, there were other ways you could have approached that. You could have said, well, 100 dirhams is 20 pound. Times that by eight would be 800 dirhams is 160 pound. And then find your 50 dirhams is 10 pound. Add them together to get 170 and so on. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So sometimes you might be asked to draw a conversion graph. So here we've got a conversion graph. And again, this was at the time of writing the question. One pound was 100 Indian rupees. Now, it may not be that now, so it's very unlikely to be. Uh, but whenever I wrote the question, it was. And uh, we've got this graph, and we've been asked to draw a conversion graph. So drawing a conversion version graph you might need to be able to draw one of those so we know that one pound is 100 rupees now if we look at this one pound well there's 10 pounds one pound would be in there so i'm actually going to find some bigger quantities and some smaller ones as well i know that no pounds would be no rupees so no pounds and no rupees that's there okay i'm going to plot that point no pounds no rupees okay 10 pounds so 10 pounds or well, 10 pound if we times this by 10 will be a thousand rupees so a thousand rupees so 10 pound is a thousand rupees if we go back to one pound is 100 rupees, if we times that by 50, we get 50 pound. So multiply by 50, so 50 pound. And 100 times 50 would be 5,000 rupees. So 50 pound is 5,000 rupees. So as you can see, we're getting these points and they're all in a line. Let's just do one more. Let's get 20 pound, so 20 pound. So if we go back up, multiply this by 20, we get that's 2,000 rupees. So 20 pound is 2,000 rupees, so there. And you see we've got four points in a nice straight line, so we're going to get a ruler and pencil, and we're going to draw a nice straight line through them. And that's it. We've drawn our conversion graph. Okay, let's have a look at one more question. So this time we've got a set of axes with miles and kilometers, and we've been asked to draw a conversion graph, and we're told that five miles is approximately eight kilometers. So five miles is approximately eight kilometers. So let's plot that point. No miles, I was going to say it was approximately equal to no kilometers. No miles equal to no kilometers. So zero and zero, that's another point, zero and zero. 10 miles, well, 10 miles would be approximately equal to, if we double this, we would get 16 kilometers. So 16 kilometers, so 10 miles, 16 kilometers. And that's there. And as you can see, these three points make a nice straight line. And I'm pretty confident we've got those right. So we can just get a ruler and pencil and draw a nice straight line through those. And that's it. We've drawn our conversion graph. And that's it. So today we've looked at conversion graphs. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at those conversion graphs. We looked at how to draw them and how to use them. And this is one of those topics I would highly recommend the practice questions because you can draw on the graph. So keep up the hard work. There's 10 days to go into that first GCC maps paper. You may have other GCCs happen at the, the minute, you know, some before maps perhaps. So obviously good luck for those as well. And you're doing really well. And I'll see you tomorrow for nine days to go. Cheers. Bye.